Tonight on the Al Denson Show, join Al and his guest, Dr. Tim Clinton. Pamplin Music Recording Artist, Solomon's Wish. Answering your email questions, Dr. Tim Clinton. Jeff Calhoun and the Al Denson Show Band. Now, here's your host, Al Denson. Welcome to the Al Denson Show. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, let me explain something to you. This show is designed to kind of get parents and their kids to kind of see a little bit more eye to eye on the different things that we face. And the topic we're talking about today is the many faces of depression. And you know what? We've all dealt with it. We've all been depressed. Man, I remember probably one of the worst times I got depressed. I was in college, man. My parents told me they wanted me to go away to college. And if you raised me, you'd understand why they wanted me to go away. And I said, no, I don't want to go away. I want to stay home. So they moved to Florida. So my parents moved down to Florida. I'm in Houston, stuck by myself, all by myself. My brothers are gone, everything. And I'm kind of growing up on my own. And you know what? When my parents first left, I was pumped. And can you imagine right where you're sitting if you're a teenager? Imagine your parents just vacating your life for a while. You're going, party on, man. That's cool. Well, you know what? After the weeks went by, I started going, man, where are the people that love me? Where's my family? Where are my friends? I started getting depressed. And I started cycling down and getting depressed. And then all of a sudden, I said, there's got to be some kind of vaccine for this depression. And if you're a Christian and you're watching, most people think, well, when I become a Christian, that's my vaccine. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Being a Christian is not a vaccine for depression. We're all going to get depressed. We're all going to go through things. Some people believe that Christians got to be on the top of their mark. They got to be on the top of the game, but this is wild because depression has many different types of faces, and it shows its head in all different areas of your life. So Jeff and I, we went out and we asked students, why do you think so many students are depressed today? And here's what they had to say. When things don't go my way and I... I, I just start getting down. When I'm alone, when I have no one to talk to, when I'm just by myself, I keep on focusing on just myself. I fail at this thing, and then I fail at this thing. I don't even notice when I do something right, but just when I fail, it's just... You know what? It's true. Depression wears many faces. And man, if you're like me, listen, I've dealt with depression. I've had to go through it. I mean, we, we get that way. And that sometimes we feel like is a natural part of life of being depressed. The problem is we have too many people that get depressed and stay depressed. And I want to give you four things, and they're definitely four warning signs to let you know you're heading down the road the wrong direction and you're starting to get depressed. Here's the first one. When you start focusing on how you feel instead of focusing on the facts. Well, once you start doing that, it's kind of weird. You start comparing yourself to other people. And when you start doing that, guess what? Your self-esteem just gets beat up and you kind of get lower and lower and lower. Then you get in the spiral where you start blaming everybody. And then, you know, it's everybody else's fault. It's the situation somebody else's fault. Can't be me. And then we start exaggerating the negative. We start saying, this thing is so bad, and we blow it out of proportion. It gets to be a huge monster. And you know what happens? We just keep getting further and further and further down the road of depression. And depression wears many faces. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to get a pen and a piece of paper. I'm going to give you this book. It's a gift from us to you. Later on the show, I'll tell you how to get it. But I want you to get a paper so we can write down the address. Because we all wear many faces of depression. And it's our goal on the Al Denson Show to get parents and teenagers to be aware of what's going on and help ourselves before we get too far down in the mud and we can't see out. So stay tuned. We'll talk about the many faces of depression right here on the Al Denson Show. go to my room and I read a lot of poetry and read just all other kind of things. I pray, I, I call on God because I, I've learned in my life He's the only, He's the only true healing. I pray and I read my Bible and I, I go to one of my spiritual leaders and, and just ask them to pray for me. Welcome back to the Al Vincent Show. You know, this is one of the best parts because we get to communicate with you guys. You know, there's a lot of ways to communicate with us, and it happens on a weekly basis. And believe it or not, our website's getting hundreds of thousands of people popping us. Our mail, I, I just pulled all this mail out. This is about, almost about 400 letters. That's from one week. And we just stuck it out here just to kind of show you guys something. It's amazing to communicate. And I want to encourage you guys. This segment is about helping you guys with questions you have. Now, by the way, we have somebody on staff, and all they do is answer emails, they answer questions, answer prayer requests. It's amazing. And I encourage you guys to, hey, send us what's going on. You know what? We don't have all the answers. In fact, we just want to encourage you. And through our encouragement, we want to tell you also what God's Word says. Now, let me tell you what this is. 
This is Dr. Tim Clinton sitting beside me. He's the president of the American Association of Christian Counselors. And every week we take a question from a student and a question from a parent. And Tim, this week, you know, we were dealing with depression. And this kid writes in. He says this, and it really stunned me. He said, my mom and dad are getting a divorce, and now we're moving to a new state. Hmm. I feel like giving up on everything, including life. What do I do? Yeah. Now, when we've read all this sure. email and mail about the, uh, divorce, you know, I was reading by a statement by Lee Salk the other day. He said, he's a child psychologist. He said, he said that divorce hurts kids, period, bar none. Absolutely. I mean, it literally reaches inside of them, rips the heart out of them, because mm. think of all the loss that's going on in that question sure. there. You now can when see you, it. Yeah, you're packing up. You're going to lose your mom or your dad. Got it. One you're, or the other. You're going to lose your home. You're being separated. You're being disconnected. Yeah. School, friends, church, whatever. All that's changing. Now I'm going to go somewhere else. Um, hopeless. Yeah, there's no doubt that you're going to feel hopeless. Can you imagine anybody in here who has ever gone through something like this or experienced change in your life? It's about the inability to control your life. The one thing about it, though, is, is God is always there. The thing you can do is fall back on Him. Oh, Realize that God loves you good. big time. Pray earnestly. Even pray for your mom and dad. The one thing I'd always encourage someone who's going through this type of thing in their home, it's talk all the time. Talk yep. to mom. Big talk time. to dad big time, Al. Yeah. Let him know how you feel. And I was thinking what you said. You said they move, they lose their friends, they lose their family. They Loss, it's everywhere. About the only thing they can take with them in relationship oriented is God. That's right. That makes sense. That's why God is so significant. Well, a mom was writing because, you know, depression is a tough subject. Yeah. And mom was writing. She says, you know, my, my daughter's grades have dropped. She stays in her room now a whole lot. In fact, she doesn't even go out with her friends. And when her friends call, she doesn't take their phone calls. When I ask her what's wrong, she says, nothing. Now, what do I do? Because I'm stuck in this rut, and I can't figure out what's going on. Yeah, now, don't dismiss it. Mom and Dad, Absolutely. if your daughter's son's going anything through, through anything like that at all, don't, don't let it go. Get in the room. Now, in yes. my mind, that's about crawling inside their world. Hang out with them. Do whatever you can to figure out what's clicking inside that heart, inside yes. that, that mind, in, yes. in a way that allows you to, Ken Canfield said it this way, use the I can formula. Get involved, I C, be consistent all the time. A, get aware of everything. And then N, nurture them constantly. If the behavior persists like this, I mean, when you see a drop in grades, Al, when you see disengagement, that's the early signs of depression. Big time. You want to stop that stuff quickly. Don't let your kids live like that. Yeah, you know, depression has many faces. It sure does. And it shows itself in many different ways and many different people. I want to encourage you guys. See this? We have a book on depression that says the many faces of depression. I want to give this to you. All you got to do is log on to our website at www.allinson.com. We'll send it to you as a gift. Hey, you can also email us at allinson at aol.com, or you can do the snail mail approach. We love this stuff. Get it every single week. It's the Allinson Show, Box 220, Grapevine, Texas, 76099. Yeah. Either one, I want to say this. We're going to keep talking about depression, and Tim is going to be our guest. Tim's going to stay with us because he's got a lot of great things to say. So don't go away. We'll be right back right here on the Allinson Show. Hi, I'm Mark Self, Celebration Ministries. Each week I'd like to share with you just one facet of what Celebration Ministries is doing to reach people for Christ. You know, it is so much more than just this TV show you're watching. We've traveled to hundreds of public schools throughout this year. You know, on any given day you can hear Al's music on the radio. You can walk into Christian bookstores across the country and pick up his music on CD and the books he's authored. You can even interact with us on the internet. You know, God is doing tremendous things through Al and through Celebration Ministries. Just take a look at this one aspect. You know, I've been doing ministry a long time, and I think the thing that I've noticed the last two years is that people are finally saying, I need a safe place where I can talk to somebody about what's going on inside of my heart of hearts. So I want to encourage you guys, if you have a computer, log on to our website. It's simply this, www.aldenson.com. When you log on there, you'll see our homepage, and on the left, you can see all the different categories and places you can click and different sites you can look at. At the same time, you'll notice right there in the front and center, there's a prayer request, and we've created our own staff just to be able to respond to you and to answer you and to help you. And I want to encourage you guys, if you want prayer, if you've got something you're praying about, here's what will happen. When you click prayer request, you get a form. You just simply fill that form out. When you get done with that, you'll send it to us. We'll take it. First thing we'll guarantee to do for you, we'll respond back to you. We'll let you know not only that we're praying for you, but we'll let you know what God says about your situation you're going through. At the same time, we print those out. We scratch out your name to keep you confidential. And we got some churches that, uh, that pray for you. And they will pray for you in that specific need that you have. 
Also on our website, you can click over to Bible studies. Guess what? You can do a Bible study every single day, and it's pretty cool. At the same time, we get so many different letters from kids on some common topics, and we've identified those to be about 34 topics. And you can run down these 34 topics, anger, frustration, suicide, and there'll be some things that will encourage you and help you. Those topics not only will help you, they'll help you when you have other people that you're trying to help that have those problems. We've also got what I consider to be a great site, and it's about our television show. If we're talking about a topic, whatever that topic is, we take all the research and all the notes that we've done, and we create a book on it. And we take this book and we simply offer it to you. You'll click on the TV icon, the minute you get there, you'll see a different page for that. You can click on the booklet offer, see all the covers of the books. Click on which book you want, fill out the form, and we'll mail you that book. It has been amazing to me how many people email us, how many people write us, and just let us know what's going on. And I want to say thank you very much. Welcome back to the Al Dentist Show. You know what? Many faces of depression. It's a hard subject. It's a tough subject. It's not easy. And Dr. Clinton, I'm, I'm glad you came back to, to help us out on this. Let me ask you a question. How big is depression among teenagers? You know, Al, I'd first of all say it really isn't normal. Um, for kids to be depressed, but more and more kids are getting depressed. Yeah. Probably five to ten percent is what we'd say. Five to ten percent of the kids in this room probably are struggling with some type of depression. What causes it? There are a lot of reasons, and I think it probably is really important to slow down and just think through these for a moment. Sometimes it can be very physically related, meaning uh, neurotransmitters in the brain. Literally, it's, there are chemicals in your brain. If they don't fire right, it can, it can bring on a depressed mood state. That's why people sometimes take medication for depression. It helps to get those neurotransmitters in the brain to fire more correctly, more aptly. Another type, and this is really common, probably the most important factor influencing teenage depression now is social influences. Maybe... Oh, yeah, big time, man. Yeah, bad relationship. Because it's, it's who influences you to begin with it, to find out what you feel about yourself. Yeah, going through loss, anything sure, like big that. big time. And so when you experience that kind of stuff, what it does, it gives you the, the, you know, the downers, the blues, but everybody gets kind of moody, L. Um, that's, that's normal. That's common among sure. teens. But, hey, let me throw in one more. I think spiritually, let me add that, sin sickness. When you know you violated God's laws. And you're living with it. And you're living with it. It makes you depressed, and then you don't know what to and do. If you don't make it right, and you're carrying the heaviness, you're dead. Those are, those are three primary causes of depression. Well, the wild thing is, is you know, we, we, we titled our book, The Many Faces of Depression. And the reason why, because I know there are a lot of different faces of depression, but there are two common ones. I mean, I did some study. There's just two common ones among teenagers. One of them is clinical, and the other one I can't pronounce. It's time what? Dysthymia. Yeah, can you explain the difference between clinical and dysthymia? Yeah, clinical depression would be something that we would call is a major depression. Okay, explain. Um, what do you mean? Uh, well, let's do this. Okay. Let's pull out, I, I brought a little checklist here. I thought, why don't we just go through these real quick. Clinically, as a counselor, what we do is we go through a criteria to check off and say, if you have five or more of these present for more than two weeks, we would diagnose you being clinically depressed. Let me roll them off, Al. You comment on them. Depressed mood, meaning feeling sad most of the time. Yeah, well, most absolutely. All the time now. That's automatically you can tell. Lack of energy, feeling tired all the time. Mm -hmm. You just suck in wind. Big time. Number three, inability to enjoy things. Things that you used to laugh and have fun with, now, you, now, now it's not bringing you any pleasure at all. I've experienced that one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've experienced that before. Number four, withdrawal. This is where people disengage. See, depression is about disengaging from friends completely. Irritability, anger, anxiety. A lot of teenage depression... Uh, young adult depression manifests itself as anger. And that's where it got me. That makes sense. If I get depressed and I start getting there, that's where I run first. They throw in a few other criteria. Uh, weight loss or weight gain. Significant weight loss or weight gain. Change in sleep patterns. Maybe you're sleeping too much. People who are really depressed tend to sleep way too much. 10, 12, 15 hours a day. On the other hand, you can sleep too little. Yeah. Maybe two, three hours a night. Mind's going crazy on you. It's running all over the place. Uh, unexplained headaches, pains, al it comes all the way down to even, th even thoughts or threats of committing suicide. And that is, those are the criteria. Literally, if you only have five of those, we would check it off as a diagnosis of probably having a major clinical depressive episode, if it lasts for more than two weeks. Then it's clinical. Now, what is the other word? Dysthymia. Thank you. Help me Dysthymia on is what we'd call a sort of low-grade depression, like a low-grade fever. This is where someone manifests, and they only have to check off two of the following criteria for more than a period of two years. So if you've been sort of, as we would say, sucking wind for about two sure, years, here sure. it is. Lack of appetite, 
or overeating. <laughs> Sounds like absolutely. I've Inability been to sleep still or there. sleeping too much again. Lack of energy or fatigue. Low self-esteem gets thrown in here. Not feeling good about who you are, your worth, value before God. Difficulty concentrating or making decisions. Can't make a decision. You know, I've got a few of them, but at the same time, I know a bunch of people who are way going down this road. They've got six or seven on this list. What do I tell them? I would say this. Uh, if someone you love is hurting like this, number one, be there. Absolutely. I mean, be there for them all the time. What's the natural thing that happens when you're around someone who's depressed? Pull away. You want to get off. away from them. Don't away do that. From. Engage with them. Number two, listen to them. Talk to them. Somebody told me, they said, if you're really helping your friend, you'll do 80% listening and 20% talking. Yeah. That way you'll get what's going on in their life. Yeah, you can meaningfully engage. Absolutely. You know, I put number three, uh, don't put them down. Uh, don't say, hey, suck it up, get over this thing right away. Because people who are literally clinically depressed really are reaching for everything they can. They don't have anything inside. They can't pull themselves up by the bootstrap necessarily. See, and then I'd say, come back, listen, reassure them. Tell them, hey, you know what? God can give you victory through this. And I believe that. Here's what we know about people who seek counseling help go through, um, I think, deliberate programs, 80 plus percent of people yeah. who go through that type of effort to get help, get help. Succeed. Yeah, they get out of it. And that's what's awesome about it. But the first step was saying, I've got to have help and doing something about it. Tim, thank you so much. I want, I want you to know something about us real quick. We understand depression is different. We're, we're, we're not professionals. And there's no way we could offer any kind of professional advice to you. Simply to say this, though, you need to get help. We're here to encourage you guys, and we want to encourage you to push through what you're going through and end up at the feet of Jesus, because we know for a fact in all this stuff, God is in there somewhere with his arms open wide saying, hey, this is not the way I want you to be. Yeah, you God know, save the kids. Big That's time. There's a lot of faces in depression. We're going to offer you this book in just a minute. I want you to continue to stay tuned, because we all deal with this. So let's do our best to help each other. You can't stay stuck. Remember, man, there's a lot of faces, but you don't have to wear the face of depression. You can get out. The first step is you got to get help. Hey, I don't want you to go anywhere else. I'm going to give you the address and how to get this book right here when we come back on The Al Benson Show. I'd pray with them and, and, t and show them where to read in the Bible about depression. I'd tell them they need a relationship with Jesus because he's really the only way to get out of depression. I would uh, tell them to go to someone they really trust explain what's going on. Really, when you surrender and say, you know, God has a plan for my life, so when things happen, it's His plan, that's when you can begin to overcome depression. I guess I lost my sense of direction again. All I see, all I see are footprints Strangely like my own Oh, I'm digging deeper The more I run The longer I'm out here The more I'm alone Come on, y'all And now I stand 
Wish right there on Pamplin Records, guys. You did incredible, man. I love it. You know, we're talking about the many faces of depression, and I guarantee you, after listening to you guys' music, he can't get depressed. Guys, I appreciate your music, and I say this to you, man. If you're out there, you want, you're you're in depression, you're wearing one of the faces of depression. Listen to this, man. Some great Christian music to help you. Solomon's Wish on Pamplin Records. They got some great music. I encourage you to check it out, guys. Don't go anywhere. Hey, listen. We appreciate the fact you're watching the show. Stay tuned. We're going to continue to talk a little bit more about the many faces of depression right here on the Alderton Show. Hang on. feel down all the time and you're just by yourself, you don't want to talk to anybody. Feeling that there's no hope, there's no other way. When something goes a little bit out of whack of your plan, you know, you, you tend to get down on yourself and take it on yourself. I don't think there's anything worse than, than doing something that you'll regret. You know, it's true, depression wears many faces. And a lot of times the sad thing is, is when someone's depressed, they can go to a mirror. Let's say they wake up in the morning. They look in that mirror, when they're looking at the mirror, it doesn't matter how beautiful they are, how great of a day is, how beautiful a day it is outside, what's going on. When they look at themselves, they feel empty, they feel alone, they feel like they've withdrawn from the rest of the world and said, I don't want anybody else to hurt me, I don't want anybody else to touch me. Because what happens is, we start putting up walls around our heart, and every time somebody hurts us, it's like another brick goes up, then another brick goes up, we get hurt. And what we're doing is we're saying, that hurt, and I don't ever want to hurt like that again. And all of a sudden, we've got all these different faces. Because we go around here and we say, I don't want to hurt like that again. So we put on this other face. Hey, you can't hurt me. Blah, 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 blah. Then all the lights go out and you're alone in your room. Guess what happens? You're saying, man, why am I like this? Why am I hurting? Why am I lonely? I want to tell you something. God can change that. And you know, if you get stuck in depression, hear me. I'm just going to give you some steps that will help you. But the bottom line is, unless you make peace with God, you're going to have a hard time getting out of this. Yeah, you know what? You can move on. It's like a roller coaster. You kind of go up, you'll go down, you'll go up. But if you want to get off the roller coaster and get on the road of life that actually has peace, it's going to take making peace with God and beginning a relationship with Jesus Christ. But let me give you those steps. Number one, the first thing you got to do is say, you know what, I don't want to stay here anymore. I'm not going to stay in the pits anymore. I'm not going to stay depressed. Then when you do that, the second thing you do is you got to admit that you need help. So if you know you're there, you got to admit you need help. And then the third thing you do is you go to somebody you trust. And when I say somebody you trust, somebody that's in your life that knows you, that knows who you are, that you really honestly trust and respect. And then once you do that, you're going to have to eventually cooperate with God. By the way, you can run down the road, you can wear any face, you can put on any smile, you can put on a sad, you can do whatever you want to. You can't fool God. God's a polite God. He stands at the door and he knocks, but he's waiting until you open the door. And I'm telling you something. If you've never made peace with God, you won't understand what I'm talking about. But I'm begging you. That's why this show's on the air. I'm begging you, make peace with God. The many faces of depression don't have to be worn by you. 
You can wear a face that Christ gave you, and that face will radiate and draw people to you and ask you what's the difference. And then you'll be able to say, I embrace Jesus Christ. But hey, if you're still on the journey, you see this book, The Many Faces of Depression, I'll send it to you. I want to send it to you as a gift. Understand the reason it's free is because we're trying to do our best to push you toward that relationship with Christ. Here's how you get it. You log on to our website. It's www.allinson.com. Click on the TV icon. Guess what? You'll end up seeing this book cover. When you see the book cover, click on it, fill out the form. We'll send it to you as a gift. If you don't have a computer, that's okay. Just send us in regular U.S. mail. It's The Al Denson Show, Box 220, Grapevine, Texas, 76099. Or if you just like the email version, here's how you can do it. Just write aldenson at AOL.com. Send us an email. Be sure to ask for the book, The Many Faces of Depression. We'll send it to you. But more importantly than that, eventually you've got to quit running from God. You've got to make peace with God. If you're depressed, give God a chance. I think you'll find out the phrase, no Jesus, no change, no change, no Jesus, will actually work in your life. Hey, thanks for watching the Al Denson Show. Now keep tuning us in. We'll be back next time right here on the Al Denson Show. God bless you. received so many calls and letters from parents saying, help me, my kids are out of control. They have no respect for authority, they're hooked on drugs, they're on alcohol, they don't come home at night. What do we do? Well, I want to tell you about a safe place. This place is called Heartland. And Heartland is about restoring your child through a relationship with Jesus Christ. But they're uniquely different in the fact that they offer work programs to also instill discipline in your child and get a pride of respect for work in there. They have a dairy, they got a farm the kids work on. There's a Christian school the kids attend so they continue to get their education. There's recovery centers that the guys stay in. There's girls' homes that the ladies stay in. They hang out with other kids just like them. They're in Bible studies. They're focused programs. And it's all a part of restoring your teenager through a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's a safe place where you can send your child. If you need help, please email us. We'll send you all kind of information on Hartman. Hey, listen, our kids are worth saving. We've got to act now. Thank you.